I'll be making an Ahara landscape arrangement using the traditional method. The material for my arrangement today will be uh, eight leaves of the Rodea japonica plus one stalk of its berries. I'll then use these small chrysanthemums. And finally, as a ground cover, uh, the only thing I could find in my yard that would work is this uh, asparagus fern, asparagus retrofractus. So those will be the materials I'll be using. Because it's traditional method, the placement of the sheep bows are defined. And so in this case, I'm going to use a three ring sheep bow and a two ring sheep bow. So the placement's very important. I'll be making the arrangement facing you, so the front is here. So the, the three ring sheep bow is placed behind the center line of the container and towards the back. So from your view, it's in the upper left-hand corner of the arrangement. The two ring sheep bow then goes in front of the center line, really in the lower right-hand corner of the container. So once these are set up, we can now start working on our main group. So one thing that helps in creating this arrangement is understanding how Rodea japonica grows. And what happens is each year a cluster of leaves grows straight from the center of the plant. The following year another cluster of leaves will come out from the center of that, which pushes this year's leaves down. The next year they're pushed even further, and each year they spread out. So for the subject group, we really want a fairly straight leaf, and I'll add that to the large hole at the back of the sheeple. And in this case, I think I need to trim the leaves. And there are several ways of trimming it. One will be to remove straight edge to the side, Sometimes you have to also uh, take off some of the back stem because it's very thick, which prevents it from sitting properly. Okay. And there's no magic here. It's just trying to get it to stay. There we go. So my subject leaf and a front filler. So the positioning of the leaves within the sheep bows are also very important. So I'm using this hole here and the first two leaves have gone here. The third leaf will also be placed in that same large opening, but towards the back of the facing back. And so in that case, Okay, so I have one, two, three. The fourth one is placed in this small hole here. Okay, so three of them are in the large opening. The fourth one is in the smaller opening behind. And as things move, as they tend to do, I'll add little braces, supports. And so in this case, I'm just using part of another leaf, the bottom of the leaf. to help support and stabilize the group, okay? So the fifth leaf now is actually your secondary. So you want it to flow out. Okay, so the sixth leaf actually is inserted in, so 
our secondary, our secondary leaf went in this hole. So we have three here, four, five. The sixth one will go in the small opening in the middle. So let me get this down. And I'm reinserting the little part of the stem at the bottom so again. Okay. The seventh leaf then is actually placed in the very front in the same opening as we place the, the secondary leaf. Okay. So we now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The eighth leaf will be used on the side. So we'll now use this hole here for the cluster of berries as well as the eighth leaf. going to add a little stay in the hole to help hold up the stem and let me add the eighth leaf followed by the cluster of berries. Okay, so this is our subject secondary group, subject and secondary with its fillers, eight leaves, one cluster of berries. Okay. Now we work on the object group. And for this, I'll be using these miniature chrysanthemums. And so whenever using any chrysanthemums, what you want to do is you want to look at them, especially when using these smaller ones, and select a group of flowers in a cluster and think of that as a flower. And so anything that's sort of facing in the wrong direction, I may want to take it off. If there are too many, if I think it's too big. So I think this is fine. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean. So Many times chrysanthemums have leaves or little or flowers coming out from the base of the leaf. And so I want to take all of those off. These little side leaves that are at the base of each leaf, I also take those off. Okay, because this is near view, which means the impression is you're looking straight down and this is the view you have of your uh, landscape, right? what's in front of you. The flowers will be relatively long compared to middle and, and far view. And the object group will be placed in the front sheet book. And if, if it's angling too much, I will add a brace to hold it up. I'll back that up a little bit. Maybe a little long. Okay. I'm then going to add a small cluster at the bottom. But before I do, I'm going to clean the leaves. Remove any, any leaf that's broken or any flower that doesn't look good or if there are too many. And this I'll also place in that 
small opening in the front. Okay. So with our object group, we have one more a tall filler. And that's actually going to be placed in the same sheet bowl as our main group. But on this side of the sheet bowl. So you can really use anything here for that um, for that stem. So I, I like the tall filler because it's taller to be lighter. I don't want a large cluster of flowers that tall. And again, any leaf that's broken, any side leaves, I'm going to remove. I'm also going to cut some stems that I can use to help prop up the leaf if I need to prop up the stem if I need it. So I think something like that will be good. And I think I will just add a little bit at the base of that. Okay. So, so that looks good to me right there. So the next thing I, I need to do now is to add the, the ground cover. And in this case, as I mentioned, I'm using this uh, asparagus fern. And what I like about it is, from a distance, you, it does look like ground cover. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off little tufts of the leaves. And I'm going to start at the base of the Rodeo japonica, and I'm going to just place it. And what I want... Oops, what I want to do is I want to come right above the rim of the container with this asparagus fern. And the way you want to do this is once you add a group, insert your next group, insert the next group right next to it so that the leaves touch. And what will happen is they'll entangle and keep everything in place. So this is going to take me a while as I continue. So let me finish this and then I'll explain the rest of the arrangement. So here is the finished arrangement. Uh, because it's winter and because Rodea japonica doesn't grow near water, we wanted to cover the entire surface of the container. If we showed water, it would give us a cold feeling, so we don't want that. And again, the Rodea japonica doesn't grow near the water. So, uh, Ohara near view landscape arrangement, traditional method using Rodeo japonica, chrysanthemums, and a ground cover of asparagus fern. Thank you.